Okay, so shear centers, everyone groaned when they were discussed in class, so I thought, hey, maybe I can try to explain them. Um, so to try to kind of explain it, I'm going to imagine like a cantilever. Um, and basically, uh, the cantilever, uh, based on where the force is, you're going to end up with this kind of like moment of a shear center off to the side of the middle of it in this like negative space here and we like uh, call that distance E which stands for the eccentric distance from web of the channel basically just another distance variable um, so we can have like a cantilever or we can have like uh, this channel and with this channel you kind of end up with two E values you'd have this distance from the bottom, uh, or you'd have this x value, or you, er, not or, and you'd have this um, e value uh, in the y direction. So you could have like an e1, an e2, uh, and whatnot. Um, and, and to kind of picture this, because it's weird, um, the uh, book had this cantilever beam he, uh, here, so I made a little one out of paper. Um, so imagine this back end is fixed with my hand and this front end is a force that's uh, imagine it's going straight down so if we put this force um, right here and call this fixed amazing drawing um, notice how it uh, it starts to twist here so there's a, there's torsion but we don't want that so if we move the force from the bottom there up onto the top, and not only on the top, um, in the book they had a like a, a piece of uh, coat hanger going off to the side, and then down, and then down behind there's like a bucket. So it's kind of off to the side in this in this area here. So to represent it, uh, I'm pushing the force down but I'm, I'm pushing it kind of off to the side. It kind of gets rid of that twisting motion there. It's, uh, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's some way to demonstrate that. Um, so uh, that's kind of a basic introduction. Oh, and of course, um, when we're calculating the shear, shear center, we have a few important important um, equations. One is this uh, integral q dx, uh, and that's little q, um, and that's basically the force equals to uh, integral little q dx, and that little q is escaping my memory of what it is. Um, I know what's in little q though, um, and that is V uh, Q over I. I we know that's the um, the moment of inertia of the, the the section. The big Q is the uh, the basically the a new like a alternate Y bar or alternate centroid. So it's a um, uh, basically if this is well, that's a bad drawing. If that's the neutral axis, and uh, all of this is this new area, then the Q would be, the big Q would be whatever um, centroid is in just this area here. Um, I'm just making a guess and saying it's there. And then V is just, um, I guess, whatever um, like basic force would be there so like a lot of these questions will just say there's a force p coming so you can just say the v equals p um, so i'll i'll do a, a question uh, 760 in the hibbler book that was one of the ones that uh, pedram mentioned or dr sedagian mentioned in the, in the lecture